I'll read. This is an all D. It is Captain America 163 from the 70s. First appearance of the Serpent Society of America. The team that evolved into the Serpent League of America in Marky Mark J's run. And I will definitely mention quickly at the start here how this three person team of snake themed bad guys have one of their members, one third of the team, not even based on a snake. Very good issue this one though. The writer is Steve Engeltine, and this is a good comic, so I won't load this video with references to how mentally unhinged Steve Engeltine is. Our Serpent Society of America, it is led by Vipper, and its members include Eel, the non-snake-themed bad guy Eel, he is also Vipar's brother, but that's not really important. We also have Arbok, who will eventually become leader of the Serpent League of America in many years' time. Nice little concise team. I will come back to them, but... For now, in my quest to remain positive about this mostly great issue... I will have to skip over talking about this scene because one of the worst things Steve Engeltine did on this book was this really unflattering subplot with Captain America lying to Ailey Atwell and hiding his current relationship from her, his relationship with her sister slash niece. We are introduced to a character here, a character of note to Captain America readers, and of note to nobody else. This is Dave Cox. He has a few more appearances, notably quite a few in the Jim Tomatoes run on Captain America, where... He briefly becomes a new Slayer Man when he is brainwashed. Dave Cox is a pacifist. He is a conscientious objector. He is missing an arm. And I actually quite like some of the stuff done with him in this issue. Of course, nowadays, I would imagine the war Dave Cox lost his arm in will be that bullshit fictional war that Kurt Busey invented. After meeting Dave, we cut away to the Serpent Society of America, who were planning an attack on Captain America. So now I will talk about their leader, Vipper, as he is the main guy here. Vipper is still a relatively new character by this point. He was introduced only less than 10 issues ago in Captain America 157. He was created by Steve Engeltine, Steve Gerbo and John Buscema, that is Sal Buscema's brother. I am not saying Steve Gerbo to diminish... Steve Engeltine's contribution or legacy, but because there is one enormous part of Vipper that is clearly Steve Gerbo. What is Steve Engeltine? And you see this throughout his run on Captain America, is that Vipper actually has a personality. He is a pragmatist, he is clever. Before this one, he led what may as well have been a prototype for the Serpent Society of America, which also had Eel, as well as a bunch of other characters who are about as snake-themed as Eel is. What Steve Gerbel brought to the character we are seeing here, Vipper's background is in advertising. 
He used to work as an advertising executive. And so he approaches things with a similar mindset. Like it was his idea to bring together the Serpent Society of America, a team with a snake theme, and a member who is an eel. And here he talks about developing a smear campaign to ruin Captain America's reputation, which we will see pay off later in this run. But his partners in crime are impatient, so the three of them just attack Captain America and Falcon Man when they are at Ailey Atwell's house. What follows is some very exciting and very well done action. The three villains feel like they are individuals, which is refreshing and for the time pretty good stuff. The fact that they didn't have the most unique or different power sets, that doesn't matter much. It is really enjoyable action. Then, Ailey Atwell and Emily Van Camp, they walk in. At least I think that is the woman from Avengers name. One of the crazy things for me is that Falcon Man, he existed for so long as a character without wings. I know he is an important character for black representation and that his introduction is an important milestone for comics. But Jesus Christ, he is useless without his wings. He is just a bloke in a colourful costume. He has no point. He doesn't deserve to co-star in Captain America for all these years if he doesn't even have wings. It is baffling that Stanley Lee and nobody until Steve Engeltine ever went. This character is called Falcon Man. He should have wings. Dave Cox gets involved in this drama. They go to Dave Cox's cabin to try and hide. But the bad guys find them. And we get this bit where Ailey Atwell tells Dave Cox to join the fight and use a rifle. But he refuses to because he disagrees with violence as a solution. Ailey Atwell calls him a coward, but I like that his take and his opinions are not delegitimized by the plot. He isn't written as a coward or a fool, and Captain America at no point even says anything against Dave Cox's stance. And obviously here you see that Dave Cox isn't a coward. He is brave despite not wishing to hurt others. I would call this successful incorporation of what could be deemed politics. Dave Cox is Tret as a real person. He is not there to try and convert the reader to pacifism. He is not an advert for pacifism. It doesn't end with Captain America saying, Wow, Dave Cox, you are braver than me. If only there were more people like you. You are allowed to think whatever you want about Dave Cox. He is a character who is a pacifist, and his beliefs and his stances, they are explored... Well, this issue says it's peace and then moves on. Our final fight is not between Captain America and Vipper, but between Falcon Man and Eel. Despite Falcon Man not having his wings yet, although they are coming soon, don't worry. This run did a far better job of pushing Falcon Man than all of the issues before it. 
There are still some problems, but we are going to quickly talk about eel instead. An eel is not a snake. You might have missed that, but an eel is not a snake. Eel had been around for years. He was first in Strange Tales, fighting Human Fire. He was in Dairy Devil. He was in Excellent Man. He has been around the block and is maybe one of the first true, utterly generic bad guys that could be put into any ad title. Starting with this run, with the story before this, with Vipar's first team, Eel becomes a bit more linked to Captain America's series. He still at no point would be thought of as a Captain America bad guy first, but he shows up in Captain America's book more often than any other, really. Still, not a snake, though. Falcon Man... He defeats Eel. And down here is what someone might disingenuously say is the equivalent of Captain America proclaiming Dave Cox and pacifism are brilliant. But it is graceful. That was Captain America 163. And I do recommend this one. Good single issue story. Plenty going on. A lot of ideas in there. I will give it seven thumbs up, but it is seven thumbs. It is not six thumbs and then a finger, like how the Serpent Society here are two snakes and an eel. <laughs>